This is DBTV. I'm here at the Cape Wine Fair in Cape Town with Enfant Terrible of the wine world, South African wine world, Andre van Rensberg of Vechelechen. Did I say that right? That is good enough. Yeah. Uh, how are you doing, Andre? What's new for you guys in Vechelechen? Well, there are a couple of things new at Vechelechen. Uh, obviously, the virus project that's been going, and we're seeing the fruit of that now. Okay. Um, We've got some new toys in the cellar that we're playing with. There's a new wine tasting facility, which is absolutely world class, uh, and two new restaurants. Oh which wow! Is brilliant. Two on site. Yeah. Is that just because pure greed? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think it's just to, to give us an even better opportunity to sell the wine. Okay. And how about wines? Have you got any new wines in your lineup? No, Vergelijke is <laughs> is really about producing and improving on what we have, okay. uh, not not changing according to fashion. Sure. So no Pinot Grigio, right. none of those things. And what's exciting you about the South African wine industry at the moment? I, I think there's a lot of new areas that are coming uh -huh. into production, new vineyards, new wineries. Yeah. Uh, I Which mean, kind of think, areas? Where yeah, would you say? and it's all over the place. Right. It's from areas that traditionally have never cultivated wine sure. or vineyards. And, and um, the amazing thing is, about 15 years ago, we had around, roughly speaking, say 300 producers. Yeah. We are now 800. Okay. So there's something for everyone. So in particular, can you name a few areas that are really interesting you at the moment in terms of well, new... Walker Bay, although it's been making wine for yeah. probably over 20 years, it's still relatively new because uh -huh. in the old days they only used to have one producer. Now there's right. a lot of producers. Yep. There are even guys making wine in the Southern Cape mm -hmm. and close to Jeffrey, some bubbly producers. Sure. Uh, Cape Point, although it's been probably going for close to a decade, is new. Yeah. Uh, um, and there are even areas and farms in Stellenbosch, which is the oldest wine, well, second oldest wine mm. region, but the best known wine region from South Africa, um, that are now new producers. Sure. And you Somerset West, where we are, although Vergelegen dates back to 1700, is new. Yeah, and you guys obviously very focused on making beautiful fine wines. And um, Do you think South Africa's fine wine future lies in the cool climate regions? Difficult question. Uh, cool climate wines, I, f I think consumers no no normally find quite difficult. Right, okay. They, because the wines are tighter, more restrained, and it's elegance, and it's, 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 it's a slim girl, but clever girl, compared to the warmer climates, which are the big breasted, big chested girls, <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. Right. They obviously attract more attention. Okay. Uh, uh, fine, fine and cool, fine wines and cool climate wines, uh, you know, it's more el almost elitist. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Um, a few years ago you made uh, quite a now famous comment about Chilean wines. Um, are your opinions still the same about Chilean wines or have you warmed to them over the years? Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> We can't repeat the comment, I'm afraid. Uh, no, we're not going to uh, repeat it, but it's, it, it was actually tongue-in-cheek, the whole thing, and it yes. was with uh, um, our then agent, Paragon in the UK, right. and the guy showed me about five different uh, wines, Yeah. and no labels, and sure. I had to taste them, and said, do you okay. know where they're from? Right. And that's where the comment came okay. from, it was tongue-in-cheek, and sure. Fun, not not never serious. No, I know. But do you have you tasted some Chilean wines in the future that you actually you've liked? And uh, has anything turned your head or changed your mind? Look, Chile has always produced. I think uh, I think extremely attractive Chardonnays <laughs> and very typically classical, almost in, from a new world viewpoint. Cab. Sure. But there's also like in any country commercial stuff. So yeah. No, it's it's not that Chile is. Uh, uh, the dog of the wine will fall. Okay, okay. And what lies ahead for South Africa in wine, do you think? Well, I think everyone in the wine world know that you always measure it against your friends. Right. So there's always a lot of work because they might be slow in changing, but when they do change, they come yeah. up with some really good things. And I think for South Africa, it's obviously 
to focus on what I believe is the most important market right. apart from the domestic market that's yeah. the UK. Okay, fantastic. Improve on quality yeah. and the UK has always been fairly its most important market. Okay. So. And finally Andre, a bit of a fun question. Okay, so you're on a desert island and you have a corkscrew and you're allowed to take one bottle of wine from, from any era and you've got to share it with a famous person, they can be alive or dead. What wine would you bring and who would you drink it with? I think it will be, uh, well, I would desperately like to taste a 1945 Cheval Blanc. Okay. And, uh, well, should it be only one person? I would like to have a whole Rolling Stones Oh, really? Okay. Mick yeah. Jagger yeah. or Keith Richard. <laughs> Either one. Educate them in the ways of fine wine. Well, apparently Keith Richard loves wine. Okay. So. Fantastic. Andre Randlandsberg, thank you very much. Pleasure.